Brooke Shields occupies rarefied air, even by Hollywood standards. Famous since grade school, she's a model, actress, author, Ivy League graduate, mother, daughter, and more. For most people, it would feed their ego to the point where you couldn't get your head through the door, but you somehow managed to stay grounded. Well, I made myself quite small for a very long time, so as not to be a threat, so as not to, you know, rock the boat again. Now the world is getting to know a whole new side of this woman, a side she wasn't always ready to share, thanks to a new two-part docu-series now out on Hulu. Pretty Baby, named after the movie that stirred up so much controversy. I was struggling to find my own voice. I wasn't told it was important to have agency. It's not about Brooke Shields, but it's Brooke Shields as social commentary. It's about finding your voice and finding your agency. And as women, we're not taught that. This project comes at a moment when so many are taking a hard look back at how this country and the media has treated celebrities like Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, and Paris Hilton. I just felt that the whole world saw me as the sex symbol, but inside I didn't feel that way at all. Whole generations now re-examining the sexualizing of young women and girls using today's post-Me Too era perspective. The project is executive produced by ABC's George Stephanopoulos and his wife, actress Ali Wentworth, who is also one of Shields' closest friends. What made you say yes to this project when so many had come to you asking to do them? Ali came to me and then she started talking to me about the theme being about the sexualization of young women. And I thought, oh, okay, now you're interesting me. In the opening scene, you're being interviewed, I think it's the Mike Douglas show, mm -hmm. right? How do you feel about all this fuss that's being made over you? I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> you really are an exquisite looking young lady. I know you've been told that, but isn't she a pretty, pretty girl? You're yeah. a young child. Here's a middle-aged man focusing on your beauty and talking about it in that sense. I mean, there's a lasciviousness to all of it. You see in my face that it's uncomfortable. It didn't feel creepy to me because I had no, I was so young. It really all seems quite inappropriate um, as to the ease with which these supposed respected journalists and, and the, the press were so quick to reduce what I thought was a really beautiful film to a lowest common denominator. That film she's talking about, the 1978 historical drama, Pretty Baby, a role that catapulted Shields to A-list fame. At the age of just 11, playing Violet, a little girl raised in a brothel who becomes a child prostitute. From that moment on, I was no longer just a model who was an actress, I became a focal point for so many things, good and bad. Even at the time, the film caused controversy, particularly in regard to Shields' two nude scenes. But most of the anger wasn't focused at director Louis Mall, but instead at someone much closer to Shields. In some ways, your mom was demonized for allowing you to do it, and yet, Louis Malle was celebrated as an yeah. artist. I mean, it, it's such an interesting double standard, you know, and it was the, the, the attacks on, on my mother. And yes, that is part of the conversation. I understand that. I really do understand the controversy. But nobody else was brought into any of it. There was no accountability to anyone. Shields would go on to star in some of the biggest films of the 80s, including The Blue Lagoon, when she was 14. And just a year later, in Franco Zeffirelli's Endless Love. And of course, who could forget those Calvin Klein ads? You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. For Shields, there is a delicate line. She's incredibly proud of the films she made in those early years, but she readily admits she wouldn't have allowed her own daughters to take similar roles. How do you balance putting your mom in context and really understanding her, but then also questioning some of her judgments. You know, I, I would have never questioned her ever when I was younger. I couldn't afford to. But to be able to look back and just acknowledge that she made mistakes. Mm. I wouldn't make those same mistakes, but I wasn't a mother then. And I have girls now. And there's a lot that I've taken from her. So I, I look back and I think, yeah, that was not okay. But she thought she was doing the smartest thing in the world. You give her so much grace. 
You know why? Because there were things that I just I had such empathy for her pain and for her weakness and for her scars. And, and she was, on the one hand, such a force and such a fabulous broad and funny and beautiful, you know? You know, she was my mama. In the docuseries, a particularly powerful moment plays out at the family dining table as her daughters talk about their mom's early films, which they admit they had not seen, like Pretty Baby. Is there nudity in it? Yes. Are you nude? I'm nude twice. Hmm. With my little 11-year-old body. Yeah, That's weird. Weird. Why wouldn't you be able to see that movie today? Why wouldn't that movie be able to be made today? I feel like it's just everything's changed. It's called child pornography, technically. Also, just like everything is different now. You do have shows like Euphoria where, you know, you have girls that are young playing characters that do go through sexual things. But yeah, I just they're think not it's... 11. They're all like 25 playing like 16. I mean, your daughter at one point says, Mom, that's like child pornography. To hear those opinions, I had no idea they heard about that. And you know, this, this sort of idea that the 25-year-olds today are now playing the 16-year-olds. And the difference to them, it stood out to them that this was an 11-year-old girl. Okay, then let me ask you about TikTok. And let me ask you about Instagram. When I see, okay, by the way. How is that different from? You're like 16. Okay, all right, that's exactly that's my answer. I post myself in a Bikini. I think it's because she's posting it herself. Yeah, she's posting it herself. I think what's so interesting about that conversation too is that they believe and feel empowered by what they post, mm. but they're still presenting themselves to be gazed at yes. and to be liked and clicked and stared at and, and analyzed and and so it's slightly ironic in, in having those conversations and there should be no shaming in it i understand that but there's this other side but you've got to you have to own it though too mm -hmm. you know you then can't complain about being objectified shields eventually took a break from hollywood and went to college at princeton where she says she gained confidence that agency rocked though when she was trying to return to hollywood and she says a man she wanted to talk to about a movie role raped her i didn't fight that much i didn't i just absolutely froze i thought my one no should have been enough and i just thought stay alive and get out and I just <laughs> shut it out. You kept it secret for so long. I couldn't handle any other way. I knew I needed to really find my own way of processing it. And so what made you want to share it finally? I didn't want to be um, less than authentic in a documentary that's all about this. To leave that out, it just would have felt kind of not right and and I have daughters now that are of, of the age where we really are having those conversations I, I owned my narrative you know I owned my truth now Shields is hoping young people watching the docuseries walk away with not just an awareness of the exploitation of young women but the lessons learned is there one thing of which you're most proud that dinner table mm. you know I mean to have come through sort of all of it and have my feet on the ground. I'm most proud that I didn't become jaded and angry and that, um, you know, that I fought for my talent. I made a decision and I was very specific about it, about a husband, about New York, about education for my girls, about how my girls were gonna be raised. And I, all my life I knew that I needed a home to come back to when you leave the crazy. And it saved me. You saved that little girl. Yes, <laughs> I think I did. I heard her. <laughs> Our thanks to Juju. Pretty Baby Brooke Shields is now streaming on Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.